Okay, so this is Cindy Lauper, Time After Time, because what you're gonna start seeing is time after times, people moving in and replacing the other people that were in Eurasia. We'll come back to that one. Okay, so the Oreg nations are the topic of this little mini video. So we talked about the basal Eurasians, this population that stems from northeastern Africa about 50,000 years ago, that a population, a subset of that population migrated into peninsular Europe and formed um, the earliest hunter-gatherers that coexisted to some degree with the Neanderthals. And we'll talk about the ancient North Eurasians later. But remember, when I put this up, I'm thinking you might have been like 50,000 to 39,000 years ago. That just feels so specific. What's up with 39,000 years ago? Why 39? Well, we know it was 39 very explicitly because it is tied to this other super eruption. Told you volcanoes were going to come into this a lot. So this is our second volcano that we've talked about. There was a caldera, there is this caldera just west of Mount Vesuvius, and 39,000 years ago, there was this giant super eruption called the Campi Flegriae, I think. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce in Italian, but that's the name of the super eruption. And what we know is that it released 450 million kilograms of poisonous sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. It cooled the northern hemisphere, by one to two degrees for two to three years. This was already a cold, dry spell. Remember, we were already looking at it being in the um, in that last glacial maximum, getting into the glass glacial maximum. Um, as there was some sort of back and forth there for a little bit. So it was already cold and dry globally, and then that northern hemisphere just fell into an even colder spell, which makes it might not sound like a whole lot of temperature change, but it makes it a lot more difficult for plants to survive, which then makes it more difficult for animals to survive, which makes it more difficult for people to survive. None of the human archeological cultures that existed below the ashfall are seen above the ashfall. There's dramatic disappearance of cultures and populations at 39,000 years ago, and that included those earliest hunter-gatherers that were coexisting with the Neanderthals. They just go away. They don't make it through this really cold spell that followed that second volcanic eruption. Now let's look at what was going on with people this side of that volcanic eruption. So we'll be looking from 39,000 years ago to 14,000 years ago. And again, time after time, another population was pulled, was drawn out of, or migrated out of that basal Eurasian population and moved into peninsular Europe. These were another group of hunter-gatherers because this predates the origins of plant and animal domestication. Another population of hunter-gatherers who moved in after the volcanic eruption and after the volcanic eruption had wiped out the humans that were living there before that volcano. So from 37,000 to about 14,000 years ago, the populations living in Europe, they pretty much all descended from this one ancestral population. And it's that ancestral population that's, it, it originally comes out of that basal Eurasian population, but they moved farther north, and then that provided a, a source of these, these multiple migrations out of that, that second source population into peninsular Europe. Now, I mentioned before that increasingly over time that the proportion of Neanderthal DNA was diminishing. I want to show you what some of that evidence looks like here. So you have this decrease in Neanderthal ancestry over time in these ancient people living in Europe. So these are each of those red dots. So you have time on that x-axis. You have on the y-axis the Neanderthal ancestry and a percentage. Um, and so you have that one OASP um, sample, which we think is a hybrid, um, possibly. Um, um, definitely has a clear diff different sequence of having a lot more Neanderthal ancestry in it than these other um, genomes, these other ancient genomes that were part of that 2016 paper that I mentioned in the last video, where I'm pulling a lot of this data from. And that over time, 
at all of those little red dots, you can see that a gradual di diminishment from about 5% um, Neanderthal ancestry to getting down to just 1 or 2%, which is what you see in these populations in Europe today. So you can see that gradual decline of the uh, Neanderthal ancestry. So the first people who came out of that, that population that had moved north, that was living in that more northern region, and then providing the source for the people moving into peninsular Europe, that first migration into, Fran into what becomes France and Spain, are a population that we call the Aurignacians. These are again hunter-gatherers. They came into Europe from that northeastern region, and these is, this is the population, the, uh, the culture where we first see Venus figurines. And you can see a picture of one here. This is from um, the Hofels cave. So this is the earliest time that we see people making figures that have these, these hyper expressions of female anatomy. So you can see the large breasts, you can see the genitalia, the, the labia, and otherwise it's, it's very much, this figure is very much dominated by female anatomy. We also know a little bit more about these people. They are associated with some of the earliest cave paintings. So we have drawings of rhinos from the Chauvet cave in Ardèche in southern France. You can see what they look like in that picture there. Here's another um, another one. This is the cave of the Oranac in southwestern France. You see the entrance into the cave. And here a person has taken their hand um, during this time period. <laughs> so yeah. 37,000 years ago, 32,000 years ago, and then they blew pigment on top of the hand, so it left this print. So we know a little bit about the Aurignacian population from their material culture, and we also know from their ancient genomes that they were a distinct population that had come into um, that region of Europe from the northeast, the Aurignacians. Now the ancient DNA um, evidence suggests that these people were entirely replaced by a population called the Gravedians who followed. The Gravedians also come from the Northeast, that same populations that the Ognations, the same population that the Ognation people came from, but they came in and completely, from the ancient DNA evidence, they seem to have completely replaced them. And so, Time after time.